animals which flourish in these community in these uh, ecosystems they are the reptiles the amphibians and uh, different types of mammals decomposers as uh, in all the ecosystems are part of this ecosystem and these are mainly the fungi and the bacteria let us have a look on a grassland food chain in a grassland diagram shows that the again source of the um, energy is sunlight which is um, coming through producers inside the ecosystem there are plants which gets energy from the sunlight and convert this energy into atp the chemical form of energy and into the carbohydrates to make their body and uh, to make their uh, life processes possible then you can see um a mole or a rat a rodent the primary consumer these are common these ecosystems and they eat upon the producers the grasses the leguminous plants they eat upon the nuts they eat upon the um, uh, leaves and other parts of the grasses so we call them primary consumers these are the herbivores then the primary consumers are eaten up by the snakes we know that reptiles um, inhabit uh, the grasslands um, snake is a reptile snakes eat upon these uh, rodents so we call the snakes secondary consumers in grasslands snakes are very common and they eat up and, uh, and of course the moles and shrews they are also very common the snakes eat upon these moles shrews or uh, the rats other types of rodents then there are hawks present in these ecosystems or there are eagles present in these uh, ecosystems which eat upon the snakes so we call them tertiary consumers because these hawks or the eagles they are getting their energy by acquiring a snake from the environment and snake itself is a secondary consumer so we call it the hawk a tertiary consumer we also call it a secondary carnivore because it is eating a primary carnivore snake is a primary carnivore because it is eating herbivore animal that is a mole or a rat so secondary consumer is a primary carnivore and the tertiary consumer is a secondary carnivore as you can see that all of these organisms this so this is a food chain that is producer a grass a grass plant primary consumer a rat maybe another rodent the secondary consumer the snake and the tertiary consumer the hawk so energy actually is flowing unidirectionally from sunlight to the plant the producer from producer to the primary consumer the mole or the rat from primary consumer to secondary consumer because it is eating the primary consumer and consume and utilizing it then to the tertiary consumer the hawk then all of these organisms when they die um or uh, plants for example they uh, shed their some parts they become part of the soil the land and here comes the decomposers there are different types of insects worms and bacteria which decomposes all of these organisms their dead bodies or their fallen parts and convert them into different inorganic or organic compounds and these inorganic and organic compounds are again taken up by as you see the diagram the arrow shows that these are taken up by the producers for example ammonia nitrates and other forms of uh, like phosphorus sulfur or others and all of these are um uh, then of course present inside the soil and plants the producers they absorb these ingredients from the soil through their roots and they become part of them so this is a generalized food chain in a grassland ecosystem let us have a look on another example of a food chain we take in an aquatic ecosystem a ecosystem present in water a water body aquatic ecosystem first of all we look at its some properties aquatic present in water it is marked by water 
which is a liquid medium, which is um, quite good to support life. Because we know that temperature is a limiting factor and water changes its temperature slowly. So water is a good medium for supporting life. Water may be fresh water or marine water, that is the saltish water. Fresh water um, have less salts, have less dissolved salts present in it. A marine water or brackish water have more dissolved salts present in it or maybe in other forms. A lake for example is a fresh water. Um, a sea is a brackish water, a saltish water. Then light and temperature penetration is important in uh, aquatic ecosystems. Light is a very important in, uh, factor in aquatic ecosystems because we know that the entry point of energy inside an ecosystem is always the sunlight. So the penetration of light inside the water in an aquatic ecosystem is extremely important. If the water body, a lake, a sea, an ocean, or a pond or a stream allows a good penetration of light, then photosynthesis is possible and the producers can make energy. If there is lesser pen uh, penetration of light, then photosynthesis may be, uh, may do not occur. Um, then the result will be uh, uh, like there will be two ways of handling it. One, some organisms uh, which are called chemotrophs, they stay here. Chemotrophs which make their um, energy and carbohydrates from uh, inorganic sources, but they are fewer. Um, so, so light penetration is a very important factor in the aquatic ecosystems. Um, and the temperature. Temperature um, stratification exists in water um, ecosystems. In the upper layers, usually because they are exposed to sunlight, they have higher temperatures. The lower layers, layers towards the bottom, um, because they are um, quite far away from the um, sunlight, because there is, a, there is a top layer of water between them and the sunlight, so they are comparatively colder. The life forms which are living in these water bodies depend upon all of these properties. Now we have we um, go to a diagram and we look at the aquatic food chains. The organisms which are uh, the producers in an aquatic ecosystem may be they may be plant or they may be called some smaller organisms called phytoplanktons, plant-like organisms. Plants, as we know, they are producers. They convert sunlight into carbohydrates and energy. Phytoplankton are also plant-like organisms. Uh, also some, uh, some algae, uh, some unicellular organisms. They also uh, have the capacity, the capability to carry out photosynthesis. Usually in the upper layers of water, uh, the water body, a pond, a lake, an ocean, these organisms are present in abundance. On the shallow sides of the water, in those zones of um, uh, the water body, for example a lake where water is shallow, submerged and fully merged plants are present. And these plants carry out photosynthesis. In more deeper regions where the lake is actually deep, these organisms, the phytoplankton, are present in um, higher numbers. They have capacity, capability uh, to carry out photosynthesis and they are the entry point of energy in an ecosystem. So there are a lot many phytoplanktons present in um, those parts of, in the upper layers of a lake in the their deeper region. These phytoplanktons are eaten up by small insects and crustaceans. There are a lot many types of crustaceans, uh, the uh, shrimps, the, some um, water insects which are present in these water bodies, they eat upon the phytoplanktons. So phytoplanktons are the producers. These crustaceans and water insects, they are the primary consumers in a water ecosystem um, uh, food chain. Then these crustaceans and insects, these are themselves consumed by um, the fish the primary carnivore fish, different types of fishes. 
these fishes are themselves eaten by eaten up by uh, the carnivore fishes the large carnivore fishes which eat upon other fishes um, so phytoplanktons are producers which carry out photosynthesis produces organic food crustaceans are the primary consumers that eat upon um, the phytoplanktons then fishes are secondary consumers that eat upon the crustaceans or the insects then other fishes which eat upon the carnivore fishes they are the tertiary consumers in um, a water ecosystem so this is how um, a water ecosystem um, food chain uh, it um, it it conduct the flow of energy from producers to um, the consumers the primary consumers the crustaceans the small insects the water insects then comes the fishes and some other fishes there could be another food chain that exists in um, uh, the water ecosystem for example phytoplankton produces the organic food these are eaten up by the herbivore fishes the fishes which eat upon the plant matter and then the herbivore fishes they are eaten up by the primary carnivore fishes then some other fishes comes which eat upon the uh, those carnivore fishes which are eating the Uh, the primary carnivores uh, they become the tertiary carnivore so different types of food chains exist in different types of aquatic ecosystems now look at an arctic ecosystem we know that arctic ecosystem is very very cold arctic area is full of snow have a snowfall many times have very very colder temperatures some specific life forms exist there we look at um, a food chain in a arctic ecosystem on the base of the food chain you can see there are algae which are scattered and present in large numbers algae are the organisms which are also producers which have capability to convert the sunlight into food and into energy in the form of atp then these algae are eaten up by the shrimps shrimps are the primary consumers or the herbivores shrimps are then eaten up by the cod fishes which are the secondary consumers or the primary carnivores of this ecosystem then the seals seals eat upon the fishes these carnivore fishes so seals they makes the secondary carnivores then comes the polar bears polar bears eat upon these seals and they make the tertiary consumer so this is a food chain present in a arctic ecosystem algae to shrimp to codfish to seal and to a polar bear now we are going to talk about food webs what are the food webs so we say food web this is a network of eating and being eaten food chains are a straight relationship of eating and being eaten that is of energy flow but in actuality when there is an ecosystem and lot many organisms are living in that ecosystem their relationships are actually much more complex than by when um, exemplified by a simple food chain that is a straight relationship for example if there is a grass Um, a grass plant present in an ecosystem this is this may be eaten by a goat this may also be eaten by a dragonfly this may also be eaten by a rodent and then uh, the rodents they makes food for the um, snakes snakes eat the rodents but rodents are also food of the owls owls also eat upon the rodents hawks sometimes we also eat the rodents so the relationship the feeding relationships between organisms are actually not as simple as a food chain there are lot many food chains that do exist inside the ecosystem and then these food chains also interact with each other to make a web or a network of the relationship uh, of the living organisms of feeding and Uh, that is of eating and being eaten by other organisms 
So food web is actually a network of eating and being eaten. There are examples, um, we take certain examples of food webs from different types of ecosystems, you know, from a grassland, forest, from aquatic ecosystem. So food web is basically a network of uh, different organisms which have relationship of eating and being eaten with each other and these are these uh, food webs actually consist of interacting food chains we take an example of a grassland ecosystem we know that in a grassland ecosystem there is a diverse uh, there is a diversity of life there are diverse forms of animals present there are amphibians there are reptiles there are mammals there are different types of grasses but grass is eaten by most of the herbivores. There are uh, different types of amphibians which also eat upon the grass. There are many reptiles like many lizards, they also eat upon the grass. So there are a lot many organisms which are eating grass. Grass is a source of energy for all of these organisms. Then these herbivore animals, all of these which are eating the grasses, they are themselves eaten up by more than one carnivores. For example, if there is an amphibian, a frog, it is uh, not e eaten up only by a snake. It may also be eaten up by an owl, by a fox. So the relationship becomes complex. Let us have a look on a food web, an example. Look at this diagram. It shows that the grass, which is present in an ecosystem, is eaten up by a grasshopper. The same grass is eaten up by a rabbit and the same grass is eaten up by a, by a mouse. The arrows shows the direction of energy flow. Then we see that grasshopper itself, so it means that the same grass, same grass plant is a source of food for a grasshopper, for a rabbit, for a mouse. Then we can see that the grasshopper itself is a source of food for a lizard because these lizards they eat upon these grasshopper. This grasshopper is also a source of food for a hawk. And we can see that the lizard which is eating upon the grasshopper, it is also a source of food for the hawk. So hawk is consuming both the grasshopper and the lizard. Here, if we make two food chains, that is from grass to grasshopper to lizard to hawk, then we see producer, a primary carnivore, sorry, a, a herbivore, then a primary carnivore, the lizard, and then a secondary carnivore, the hawk. If we look at other way, then we can see that grass is eaten up by the grasshopper and grasshopper is directly eaten up by the hawk. So grasshopper is a herbivore, and uh, which is a primary consumer, and the hawk makes then a secondary consumer and not the tertiary. Then we see that grass is eaten up by rabbit, herbivore, and rabbit is eaten up by the hawk. So it is also a more simple food chain. Then the mouse eats the grass and mouse is eaten up by the hawk. But there is another way of um, uh, this food chain that the grass is eaten up by mouse, mouse is eaten up by the snake and snake is eaten up by the hawk. So all of these food chains in interaction with each other actually makes the food web. A complex relationship between the living organisms of being eaten and eating someone else. This is one example of a food, uh, food web in um, a grassland ecosystem. We look at a one more complex example. Here you can see in this diagram that there are producers and decomposers, different types of, and these producers, if we look at start from producers, then these producers, the plants, which are of various kinds, these are eaten up by different types of organisms. A butterfly, a frog, a bird, a deer, a squirrel, a lot many. And then all of these organisms, or we can say every one of these herbivores, these are all called, will be called the herbivores, the primary consumers. Every one of these primary consumers are eaten up by more than one secondary consumers, the carnivores. For example, you can see that um, uh, a raven is uh, eating a butterfly, it is also eating a frog, it is also eating a bird. 
so secondary consumers they makes a, a various complex chains with the herbivores uh, the primary consumers and with the grasses then there are few tertiary consumers and these tertiary consumers as you can see like um, uh, a bobcat a big cat a fox they are eating different types of secondary consumers and they are sometimes eating some primary consumers as well this makes a more complex web um, of a, of a diversified ecosystem so if an ecosystem is more diversified in its life forms that is it have so many life forms then the food webs or uh, the feeding relationships present between uh, its um, living community will be far more complex so the complexity of a fi of a um, uh, food webs a food web actually depends upon the complexity um, of life and the diversity of life so more the diverse of uh, more the diversity of life more the complexity of the food webs we look at an example of a food web from an aquatic ecosystem aquatic ecosystem we know as they are very suitable for life they are suitable for different types of life forms so aquatic ecosystems they have animals they have plants they have phytoplanktons they have zooplanktons they have decomposers their food webs are also usually very complex let us have a look on an example as you can see in this diagram you can see two zones of water one is the top zone the other one is the bottom zone in the top layer of water there is more penetration of light there are different types of phyto and the zooplanktons present the phytoplanktons are um, the producers which are uh, utilizing the sunlight and um, the inorganic carbon the carbon dioxide and converting it into organic form of uh, carbon the food then there are different types of fishes and the zooplanktons which are eating upon these different types of phytoplanktons for example a fish is eating these phytoplanktons and insect is eating the phytoplanktons and then we see that there are other fishes which are eating upon these fishes we can see a bear which is um, uh, present in the nearby areas and this is eating um, the fish as well because bears they also come to the waters and they also hunt the fishes so you can see that there are different types of uh, food chains that do exist in this ecosystem the water ecosystem and they interact with each other and the same thing is eaten by up by um many other organisms and all those organisms they are um, eaten up by some other organisms so in um, in water also diverse types of uh, food webs they do exist then we take another example of a desert ecosystem deserts as we know are hot dry climates they are hot and they are dry because there is um less rainfall the deserts have few specific plants and few specific animals let us have a look on a food web in this diagram you can see that there is a sand and soil on the base then there are specific types of desert plants these desert plants you can see are eaten up by different types of insects these plants are also eaten up by the lizards the reptiles these are also eaten up by the rodents and uh, these insects then themselves because these all of these insects the lizards and the rodents all of these makes makes the, the herbivores or the primary consumers then comes the secondary consumers the spiders scorpions different kinds of lizards they eat upon the insects then the lizard for example is eaten up by a hawk the lizard is also eaten up by a fox then the herbivore lizards which eat upon plants they are eaten eaten up by both fox and the hawk the rodents different types of rodents which are herbivores which eat upon the plants they are eaten up by the snakes they are also eaten up by the hawks and the foxes directly and indirectly indirectly in this way that rodents eats upon plants snakes eat upon the rodents and then snakes are eaten eaten up by the foxes and the hawks so we can say that 
these rodents are directly eaten by the hawks and the foxes and they are indirectly through snakes eaten up by the foxes and the hawks. It means that a complex uh, relationship um, uh, of uh, food web, food webs also does ex do exist in the uh, desert ecosystems. Though desert, desert ecosystems are comparatively less diverse in life because these are more hostile environments. But you can see that even these environments, lot many organisms can exist. Uh, there is a, quite a good biodiversity and uh, uh, this diversity makes uh, the complex relationship of uh, eating and being eaten which is called a food web. This is another example of a food web in uh, a desert ecosystem which shows again the producers at the base as usual the primary consumers, different types of squirrels, rodents, ants, then secondary and some primary consumers, then tertiary and some secondary consumers, and then tertiary consumers, some secondary consumers, and some quaternary consumers. So food webs actually makes complex relationships between organisms um, for energy flow. The forest ecosystems are more rich in their biodiversity because they are more suitable for life. Uh, you can see uh, in this diagram um, a relationship uh, in the form of food web between organisms in a forest ecosystem. There are trees which are eaten up by the deer, by insects, by rodents, by birds. Rodents and birds are eaten up by the foxes and the owls. Deers are eaten up by the bears by uh, large cats, then the insects they are eaten up by the birds, they are eaten up by the opossum and so on. So food webs are uh, the complex networks which, uh, which mark the relationship of different trophic at different trophic levels between the organisms of a specific area, of a specific ecosystem. In today's lecture, we talked about the food chains and the food webs. We primarily covered the biotic components of an ecosystem. Then we talked about the food chains, which are the straight relationships of energy flow between the organisms. And we talked about food webs, which are complex forms of energy flow and interaction of the food chains actually present in different types of ecosystem. We also talked about some examples from various ecosystems about their food chains and about their food webs.